about to leave Already packing, come with me I'm Ben I'm Maz And we moved to Australia with our children in 2016 We've set up a new life for ourselves here on the Sunshine Coast and we film all about it as well as giving you some tips and tricks in case you're looking at doing the same. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I want to go back to bed. Why have you got gloves on? Because my finger hurt and it really stings. Why? Up time. Hi guys and welcome back to the Bam Family. So in today's video, we're going to talk about what it's like bringing up children here in Australia. Go on then. <laughs> so there's a few reasons why we're particularly happy on raising the kids here in Australia. We feel so much safer bringing our children up here. Um, the crime rates are a lot lower than when we was over in the UK. If I've ever forgotten my wallet and left it at a shop, I know that I could pretty much go back and it's gonna be handed in or it's still gonna be in the same spot where I've left it. There is so much more space here. Um, you feel a lot more free. You don't feel so cramped. Yeah, it's just generally a lot more space for getting out and doing more things. And that leads us on to the next one. That's more outdoor activities. So we've got all the water sports, all the mountain climbing, all the um, nature walks. You will never run out of things to do. There's, so there's a large emphasis on a healthier lifestyle and looking after your environment. So you don't often see litter here. When I've had family and friends come out, they've always said how clean it looks and surprised that people can walk around barefoot. And that's just a handful of the main reasons why we love living here with and bringing our kids up in this beautiful country. Well, um... We asked you to let us know what your questions were about bringing up children in Australia and we're going to answer your questions right now. This second? This second, right now. Right now. Like literally stop what you're doing, we're going to answer them now. What time does school start and finish? Well, this varies from school to school. So at the moment, the girls' school starts at 8.45 and finishes at three o'clock. Lily's starts at 8.30 and finishes at 2.45. So it just depends on the school, but yeah, roughly, roughly you're looking about 8.45 to three o'clock. What year does high school start? Is it still year seven? Yes, it is. As far as I'm aware, that's the case in all of the states, but there might be variations depending on different states. But as far as I'm aware, Queensland, it's definitely year seven um, that high school starts. What are Oz kiddies like with English kiddies? Is the prejudice? No. no. So no, there's no prejudice. And to be honest, prejudices usually happen with our adults. Um, prejudice is just a... a form of ignorance and stupidity. Children don't have that in them. It's only adults that have that. Some adults. <laughs> Some adults, not all adults, obviously. Everybody here is lovely. <laughs> but no, there's absolutely no prejudice whatsoever. Kids kids don't care about culture and race. They um just they like embrace out and play. Yeah, they, they just have fun with whoever. Is the curriculum similar to the UK? Do they do GCSEs and A-levels or something similar? Oh my gosh. So it's different in every state, but the Queensland system, it confuses the hell out of me. So what they've got is 
a task which they do in year 12 but there's so many different ways to go so you can do traineeships and apprenticeships you can do your ATARs which is the points that you need to be able to get into uni there's a lot of different options it's not the same um, but they'll obviously learn about most of the same things but it is a very different system and to be honest we have a child going through that but I'm still a little bit baffled by it. Okay, let's go for an example. So obviously we have a child who's going through it. Lily is doing a, she's doing four ATAR subjects, which would give her enough points to go to university should she get good grades. Um, but she's also doing a traineeship. So Lily actually only attends school four days a week. The other day, she goes and does a traineeship where she's working towards a certificate three in business. So there's actually many different options for kids here. It's not a one size fits all. They're quite, they're quite good in that they realize that different kids need different things. So I'm really sorry, we can't answer for the whole of Australia on that, but it gives you a bit of an indication that's, that's how it goes in Queensland. Do they struggle to make bonds with family that live in the UK? I wouldn't say so. Like when we do go over, our girls are just as loved and connected, I guess because of social media. Yeah, I'd say they probably don't know ins and outs of everything that's going on with the other family, but um, when they have a phone call and um, we go over, you spend a lot more time together, like more precious time. Yeah, I mean, it's a tricky one. I guess there's some relationships that probably probably they don't see people so often, but we do make phone calls. We do do FaceTimes. Our lives are obviously splattered across social media, so people know quite a lot of what's going on with us. And our families are very loving, so I feel like even if they didn't see each other for 20 years, there'd still be a really strong connection because our families are that strong. How are they on flights when you do travel back? Fine. Pretty good, yeah. The girls, are, like the smaller ones, they're obviously going to be really happy because they're going to be sitting there watching cartoons and films and stuff like that on the plane. Uh, is the school better in Australia? It's hard to say because... It's different. Yeah, because obviously there's a lot of good schools in the UK and there's tons of good schools here in Australia as well. I think there's elements um, that I prefer here. I can't think of any elements that I prefer in the UK, but obviously wherever you get your education, either in Australia or England, or I, I just know that that particular lady that asked, asked that question is from England. Um, I think whatever country you get your education in, you're going to get a fantastic education, but... There are elements that I definitely really appreciate at the schools over here. But we'll talk about those in some other questions because I know that some of those questions are coming up. Do schools seem similar to UK? Is there bullying? Is there good support for autism? Thanks. Similar in many ways from where we've lived before. The schools here, the public schools do seem bigger um, with more students and they also seem to have more support. There seems to be, um, I don't know, maybe bigger budgets or something. They seem to have more um, more staff resources than we've seen in the UK. The UK, um, definitely, teachers weren't really treated well in that respect. Uh, as regards of the bullying, there is bullying. Um... You get that everywhere. Yeah. Unfortunately, you get toe rags everywhere and you've just got to hope that the school's got the right systems in place to deal with those toe rags. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's something that you've really got to, as a parent, this is probably more of a parenting thing, so as a parent, you've got to know what's going on with your children and whether your kid's the bully or whether your kid's the victim. Um, you've you've got to really be in your kid's life and know exactly what's going on, especially when it comes to things like social media, because that's that's a big um, rabbit hole, really. 
Is there good support for autism? I think so. I think there seems to be more teachers in a class to look after the kids. So yeah. it's not so much that some kids get forgotten about. Yeah, I think from what I've seen, there definitely seems to be more support available in that they seem to have more staff. So, I mean, obviously there are going to be some schools that um, deal with some things better, but I, I personally, I feel like having more staff definitely would help. What age do they start school and what are the school term dates? Here it's September to July. Okay, so the school year starts in January and runs through to December. Um, with regards to what age do your children start school, that's actually different in every state. So there is a calculator for when your child will start school and I'm going to put it in the description below for you. Lucky you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, how big are the classes? Our boy has autism and we were wondering if they're bigger or smaller. So in the primary schools, um, and I, again, I'm just talking for, for the school that our girls go to. I'm not necessarily talking about high school or all schools in Australia. because I can't speak for all schools in Australia. It tends to be between about 20 and 25. So from what we're used to, the class sizes are slightly smaller. Up until now, I'm not sure as time goes on, obviously as the girls are at school longer, but there seems to be at least one teacher and one teacher's aide in the classroom. It, so that's pretty, I think that's pretty resourceful for a school. Three things Australian schools do differently to UK schools. Oh, this is a goodie. One thing that the schools do differently is from, depending on the school, but from around year four, um, the children go on overnight camps. So whereas I know that we, when we were at school, we didn't go on um, a school excursion, overnight excursions until year six, they seem to start a little bit younger here. So from grade four, they start going on camps. There's a lot more technology in use here. I noticed a lot of the kids in primary school using devices. So either iPads or drones, a lot of technology. So the kids are being trained from a much younger age in the use of technology for work, um, which we love. And the other thing that uh, the Australian schools seem to do differently is we felt a lot more involved in the earlier years of schooling here. So in prep, which is the first year of school and year one, I feel like we were invited into the classroom a lot. We were really a part of the learning. We would... Um, we, Father's Day, you just get, had to go in for that, you know. Yeah, on Mother's Day, they put on massive events for the parents to be involved in. And they also had Facebook groups for the parents and we we felt very involved and like we knew what was going on in the classroom every single day. Obviously that doesn't continue throughout the whole of their schooling, but for certainly the first few years of the girls starting school. Now again, this might be more of a thing that's done at the school that we're at, but that's definitely the things that we've noticed. Do you get six week holidays? Uh, I think it's around six weeks, so they usually break up early to mid-December and they then um, go back January, at, the end of, yeah, at the end of January. So, one great thing that's done here actually is that all of the schools in, well, all of the public schools in the state have the same term dates. So it's not different for every school, it's the, the whole of the state is on the same term date. Can you explain SRS, please? Do all schools have this? Right, so this is the Student Resource Fund or fee or what it, whatever it's called. <laughs> the Student Resource Fund. So as far as we're aware, obviously we only use a few schools. So what you do is you pay, say it's $100 for the school, you pay $100 per child per year. Every school has a different fee, but 
roughly a hundred dollars and that pays for things like incursions where they might have a guest speaker come in to speak to the children about something. It pays for a variety of things, maybe Reading Eggs, which is an app for their iPad and it gives it pays for their login details. So the Student Resource Fund is something that every parent really pays, should pay to provide for events and resources within the school. So as far as we're aware, every state school has them. Are they better at helping if your child needs extra help care? It's hit and miss here. Again, we, we can only really speak for the schools that our children go to. We think so. We think, we honestly couldn't speak highly enough about the schools that our kids go to. Yeah, and we Emma think- Emma was a little bit behind with her reading and um, they put a lot more extra help to her to catch her up and yeah, she's actually back to where she should be. Yeah, that's a really good point actually, because she was behind in her reading and this wasn't something that we asked for, but the, the school actually put on events before school a couple of times a week and she would go in early with the other children who needed it to get extra help to get them up to the levels. Yeah. We think that it was an excellent Yeah, they race. They do do a lot of clubs to sort of help kids sort of like catch up or um, if they need extra help and stuff. What were your worries for your kids once you got to Oz? And how did your kids find the transition? The kids are pretty easy going. Our kids are all for adventure and so there was no issues with regards to transition. They they went gung-ho at it. If anyone was going to be more worried about was Lily because she already had a friend group in the UK. Yeah, she, she's quite an adaptable character. Lily's always been quite adventurous and she'll go with the flow. So I don't feel like we had any problems with the transition. Mm. Is there a oh, Sorry, I feel like there was something else in that question. What were your worries? What were your worries for your kids once you got to us? Yeah, we don't really worry about stuff. We we just go with it. If there's any problems that arise, then we'll just work it out. Yeah. Oh, there were um, there were koalas in Lily's first school that she went to. There were actually koalas that lived in the school grounds. And koalas. So, yeah, so it was real fun transitions as opposed to anything daunting. It was a really exciting transition. Yeah, she had to learn not to go near the guanas. That were oh, snakes. There, was, there were snakes there as well. Was there? Yeah. <laughs> Is the curriculum the same as the UK and do the kids have to sit SATs tests in year six for year seven? Um, okay, so the curriculum is probably, they would learn all the same skills, but there's differences. So for example, over here, they're going to learn about some of the Aboriginal culture and Australian culture. So it won't be that they learn exactly the same things, but they will still learn all the same skills. They'll still be really well adapted by the end of their schooling. They don't do SATs, but there's something that's the equivalent. Lily. Maths or um, it's called NAPLAN. That's it. Year Nat three, five, seven, and nine. Okay, yeah. so year three, five, seven, and nine do NAPLAN testing, but it's not the be all and end all. There's no stress involved around it. So whatever happens, happens. Have you found that your kids have become more outdoorsy? How did you deal with your kids missing family? Oh, we could not get Lily to go outdoors in the UK, so she's definitely more outdoorsy. She's out all the time. She goes to the beach all the time. Um, we spend a lot of time on the acreage here. Um, so yeah, she does spend a lot of time outside. I would say that we definitely, the kids definitely spend a lot more time outdoors here because we've got the weather for it. You know, well, apart from the last six months, it's been rather rainy, but <laughs> generally the kids have been outdoors a lot more here than they ever would have been back in the UK. Yeah, and that's why it's so quiet, isn't it? Because the girls have ridden up the driveway to the next door neighbours. Yeah. And they're hanging out outside. They've moved in there. Pretty fine. <laughs>
there was another part of that yeah. question, wasn't there? Uh, how did you deal with kiss the kids missing family? We're always on FaceTimes or talking about people. And I think that's the thing, because we talk about our family a lot, they, they know them. Yeah. We have two, have a two and a one year old, hopefully making the big move to Oz within the next two years. Any advice for us? P.S. We love your videos. Um, oh, advice for someone moving with babies. Consider an au pair, because if you've got young children, then you possibly could do with the help. And where you don't have any family. And the other thing is to make sure that your children start swimming from an early age, because that's very important here. So as soon as your children get here, I'd get in the swimming pool with them and just teach them as much as you can. And maybe also consider swimming lessons. But just enjoy yourselves. Just make the best memories. You're gonna have so many adventures when you move over. Make the best memories. Even join some groups with um, other people with kids the same age. That's a really good point, actually. Make yeah. sure you make friends because you could probably feel very isolated if you're at home with young children in a new country. So it is very important that you make friends early on. Do you pay for primary or secondary schools? Not state ones, no, unless you've got a visa that requires you to. So you would need to check with your immigration agent as to what visa you've got. What do you love about your school? What's extra special compared to UK schools? So we mentioned that in an earlier question. The, the tech aspect we think is extraordinary. The teachers are amazing. Yeah, I mean, the teachers are amazing everywhere, but I think the fact that there's more teaching resources. Yeah. I think that's what makes the difference. I think where the classes are slightly smaller, they get to spend a little bit more time with the kids. One thing I have noticed here as well, actually, is that they're very innovative and the innovation with teaching and joining in studies of you know the best way to learn it does seem to be very supportive here to um for teachers to take part in those studies extracurricular activity yeah there's there's lots of different clubs to um to join so in school the girls do minecraft club reading club singing um I can't think of what else the girls do. There's so many different options. Those are just the ones that our girls do in their lunch breaks. And outside of school, there's nippers, there's Oztag, there's... Um, Soccer. Yeah. Football. Yeah, Some there's all kinds of things. There's, there's a never ending list of things that they can do. Do you pick schools based on the catchment or which you like best? So certainly in the area that we're in, you're in a catchment area and that's the school that you go to. You might be able to get around it, but generally you go to the school that you're in the catchment area for. But what we have noticed is that if there's a particularly good school, a particularly good public school, some people will move to that area just to get in. Yeah. Um, and are they rated? I believe they do. Um, I believe they do get checked up on and audited, and there will be some kind of rating. Anyway, we hope that's answered all of your questions. But if you do have more questions, drop them in the comments, and we'll try and get those answered for you. Without further ado, please give this video a like. like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next Sunday. Bye. Did you know this? No. I've not got any holes in my trousers today. Oh, well done. Ben, are you yeah. ready for filming? Yeah. Cool. What is this black bit that's covering my face? It's really annoying. Uh, it's just like a thing to show whether you're on level or not. No. Don't worry, it won't show that in the picture. No, no, no. Ooh, she just woke me up from that. <sighs> I know, I recorded the moment. <gasps> we are <laughs> special indeed.
Numero uno. I just, I just looked on my phone because I photographed, where I screenshotted all the questions we got, and I've just come to my phone and I've got a ton of um, selfies that Mia has taken of herself that I didn't realise were on there. Anywho, what are Ozki's? Oh, la, 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 la. I just don't know. <laughs> Men didn't come to the meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Be sure to watch these awesome videos, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and follow us on our socials at the BAM Family in Australia.